Last year, Britain's total benefits payout was over £149 billion. Pounds. I had to give up full-time employment. I think it's one of the best things I could have done. But even though the employment rate is at an all-time high, some people say that working just doesn't pay. I'd have to probably earn £500 a week to be on the same sort of money. And that being on benefits means living life on their terms. Just because I'm on benefit doesn't mean that I can't have a nice home. I spend a lot of my benefits on alcohol and socialising. Meet the £33 million lottery winner who never was, pursuing a celebrity lifestyle funded by the state. I'm determined I'm still going to have the things that I really want. And the man who's using benefits to pay for his dream life by the sea. Yeah, I'm not going to yeah. work and he's on benefits and he's out more than us. us. Oh, You're making me feel life. guilty now. But while some love the high life, others struggle to afford the basics. We also meet the single dad who says he needs help just to get by. If I went to work, I'd still have to pay childcare, rent and everything. Whether surviving or thriving, they all claim they are better off on benefits. If you really put your mind to it and you really want something, you can do it, even on benefits. Worcester in the West Midlands home to around 100,000 people. One in 10 are on some form of benefits, including unemployed 48-year-old former cleaner, Suzanne. I'm very house proud as it is, I, I've got to be honest, and I get that of my mum. And yes, I do like, if the pillow's not straight, say for instance, the pillow was like that, it would do my head in, it would, I have to shake it out, put it just right, and I have to put everything with it. Just because I'm on benefit doesn't mean that I can't have a nice home because I'm one of those people. If I couldn't, like, have a nice home, I would be so unhappy. Suzanne lives on £1,600 a month in benefits after being signed off sick eight months ago. But Suzanne hit the headlines when she was accused of falsely claiming a £33 million jackpot from the National Lottery. This is only some of the papers. Me exposure, trying to claim apparently the 33 million. I just can't get my head around it, how people can say that. Some of it says fraudster, when's the police going to come and get her? What for? I realise stories have got to have a twist and, you know, it sells papers, I realise that. But for me, it's like, do you, does people really think I would have brought that on myself? Suzanne did have the winning numbers, but the barcode on her ticket was unreadable leading the papers to claim it was a forgery. But she claims it got damaged in the wash, and with the date missing, she couldn't be sure when she'd bought it. I emptied my jeans pocket, and in the one pocket was hard... Um, ..and in the other was what I could describe when I had it pulled it out of the lottery ticket. So, really, I had no choice but to send Pamela this ticket. Because if I'd not sent the ticket, I never would have forgiven myself if it had turned out, the winning ticket. Suzanne's jackpot claim was rejected when the real winners came forward. But once the press got wind of the story, she quickly became front page news and the prospect of fame beckoned. I walked in the kitchen and all I remember seeing is out there were cars, there were people stood, they had microphones. There was people then coming towards my house onto the driveway. From then, it, it was print after print in the newspapers. I was most, what they said, Britain's most hated woman. While Suzanne claims it was an honest mistake, she'd got a taste for fame, and now she still wants to live like a lottery winner. Starting with her car. So excited, like a little kid getting some sweets out of the sweet shop. Um, and it's, you know, every time I get in it, it's great. And I was given a choice of colours, and automatically I, I white, because I thought white stands out more, especially with the uh, 20 inch alloy wheels. Two months ago, Suzanne used her benefits to fund a top of the range limited edition sports car worth £28,000. It was important to me, obviously, to have a car because can't walk very far without becoming very breathless. And obviously, I picked the car I've got. I am entitled to the car, and I do deserve it.
The Isle of Sheppey, just off the North Kent coast, is home to 56-year-old Carl. He moved here eight months ago from the Midlands. I love living in Lysdale, you know, it's such a beautiful place. Friendly people, people coming down, getting made strangers all the time, you know, and favourite ice cream parlour to the right, which I absolutely adore and I use it at least twice a week. Carl lives in a privately rented one-bedroom flat, which is mostly covered by housing benefit. He pays an additional £12 a week out of his benefits for his dream seaside home. If you look outside at the, the views there, see the sea, lovely trees in blossom, um, lovely gardens. And uh, I've got this lovely place, you know, I mean, the kitchen, absolutely massive for a single bloke on his own. Nice size lounge, plenty big enough. Little dining table for two. Not that I've had anybody dine with me yet, but yeah, there's time. This is my feature wall, which I, I do for myself, you know. It's given me a little project to do over the last few months. Please ignore the ladies' panties, I don't wear them. <laughs> I bought them, just trying to call it my bachelor pad, you know, pretending that I've had a conquest. <laughs> but in my age, you don't have conquests. <laughs> Carl suffers from a respiratory problem that restricts his airways, so he gave up his job as a taxi driver and went on benefits. To be honest, I can't knock the benefit system, you know. it's um, They're good to me. Um, they give me the amount of money that I need. Due to his health, Carl receives personal independence payments on top of his employment support and housing allowance. In total, he gets £1,300 a month in benefits. I'd have to probably earn £500 a week, you know, in a job, after paying tax and national insurance contributions, you know, to be on the same sort of money. Despite his medical problems, Carl admits that a large chunk of his benefit money goes on unhealthy habits. I'll be honest, I spend a lot of my benefits on alcohol and socialising. And, yes, if you do look in the fridge, there's uh, one or two cans in there. There's also some healthy stuff, like cheese, chicken, lure pack. But, uh, yeah, I do tend to drink a bit too. I do try and moderate it, because when you're on a limited income, you know, you have to be a little bit careful. While Carl is determined to use the doll to fund his dream life, some people say they just get by on their benefits and one of them is 33-year-old single dad, Cray. Brooklyn, come on. Yeah. It's time to get up for school. What time's it? Quarter to eight, come on. He lives in a two-bedroom house in Bradford with his seven-year-old son, Brooklyn. What? Yeah. Craig separated from Brooklyn's mom two years ago and now looks after him full-time. Due to circumstances, I had to give up full-time employment and go on the benefits, but I'm a bit better off like this. As a single parent, Craig receives £1,000 a month from the state. It's less than he used to earn when he was working, but he has no regrets. I think it's one of the probably the best things I could have done. We spend more or less every single day together. He's thriving at school. He loves just... Being with me, it's just me and him. He's a proper daddy's little boy. Loads of toys here. He's got all different types of Nerf guns. So he don't, he don't go without. He shouldn't have to miss out on his childhood or his youth because of the financial situation that I'm in. Um, at the end of the day, it's not his fault. Since leaving full-time employment, Craig is now getting used to living on benefits and with a son to raise, He's determined to make it work somehow. Being a dad's my number one priority. That's all I want to be out of Brooklyn. I don't want to, I'm not bothered about anything else. It doesn't matter if we've got £10 or £1,000. As long as we're both happy, I'm, I don't care. Although making ends meet is sometimes hard for Craig, he believes even if he went back to work, he wouldn't be any better off. If I were working at a normal job or a minimum wage, I'd probably still be struggling because I'd have childcare to pay for morning and night. Um, I'd have to pay my rent and everything like that. I'd probably have a little bit more money, but I don't think it'd be much more, so I'd still be struggling, probably. Coming up, 
Suzanne's celebrity lifestyle means another extravagant purchase. Inside the shed, I'm going to have a jacuzzi. The way I see it, yes, I can afford it. Craig has an unexpected dent in his finances. I've taken £80 out. Hopefully, I won't have to spend that much, but that's roughly what I've got to play with. And Carl takes some flack for his benefits lifestyle. Come on, we work, and he's some benefits, and he's out more than us. You're it's making me feel guilty now. You're making, You're making me you feel, feel guilty. You are! On the Isle of Sheppey, ex cabby Carl has been out of work for over a year. But living on benefits gives him the freedom to spend his days how he wants. Off down to the pub now, um, probably spend three or four hours there, you know, having a social drink with a few friends. Uh, more often than not, they buy me beer. <laughs> but uh, I do get me round in occasionally, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's only fair. Carl goes to the pub almost every day but he says he's doing it to improve his health and fitness. The advantage of being on benefits is that I do have time to go out and socialise. It's good for me. The doctors have told me to get out. You know, it all helps towards the fitness and the health, you know, and the movement, as I've got to do. Although Carl only moved to the Isle of Sheppey eight months ago, being a regular at his favourite pub means he's already got to know the locals. Man, we work and he's some benefits and he's out more than us. It's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, I it's know. Not, it's not, it's You're making not me feel guilty now. You're, You're making, making me feel, feel guilty. You are. I don't know how you do it. No, no I, I don't. don't. I don't know how you do it. I yeah. can't afford to go out every night. Yeah. You yeah. can. You go out every night. Yeah, yeah. Living the life. Carl's benefits are equivalent to a pre tax salary of £18,000 a year, three grand more than someone working full time on minimum wage. Drinks on you tonight. <laughs> no, yeah. I haven't been paid that much. There you go for you, and you get about thirteen hundred quid a month. What? So how much do you get on benefits? Yeah. They're choking. Good. I wonder why you're out every every yeah, other night. Yeah, I'm right? sure. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know. You get thirteen hundred pounds. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. It's Some true. people work yeah. and they they don't even get thirteen hundred. I know. Yeah. I know. And you've got it on a plate. All right. So no. After a couple of soft drinks, Carl's mates are heading back to work, but he plans to spend the rest of the day and his benefits at the pub. So, a couple of hard working lads there, and I'll be out with them again tonight. So, they do rib me a little bit about being on benefits, but who wouldn't? You know, it's. Uh, I'd say they probably get out two or three times a week. I'll get out twice as much as them. But uh, hey oh, that's life. I'm not going to change for anyone. I'm not. In Worcester, 48 year old ex cleaner Suzanne has been living off benefits since giving up work due to a heart condition. After achieving notoriety attempting to claim a £33 million lottery jackpot, Suzanne's fallen for fame and the millionaire lifestyle. Today, she's splashing out on a garden makeover. Inside the shed, I'm going to um, have an inflatable jacuzzi. Suzanne receives around £20,000 a year from the state, and she says that being on benefits shouldn't stop her from having what she wants, including a new jacuzzi. I get the same amount of money, really, in effect, to what I was near enough when I was working. So the way I see it, yes, I can afford it. And yes, I've got the money in my account. I could just go and buy one for £500 if I wanted. But I think that's me being a bit silly because I've got to be realistic. I've still got to have money to live. So I think that's where you've got to draw a line. So I think realistically, I think maybe up to about 350 But I think that's my maximum what I've allowed. Um, because hence I still need a tumble dryer, obviously, as well. With over a third of her monthly benefits going towards her plan, Suzanne's transforming her garden shed into a luxury spa fit for a celebrity. And all inside is going to be um, probably nine mil of plywood all around. And then I'm going to have lights all around. And then I've got one of those little disco ball things in here as well. I think I'm mad, but I'm not. <laughs> just takes time, doesn't it? And I want it there and then. I want it now. <laughs> so it's doing my head in a little bit. 
While Suzanne is planning her luxury lifestyle on benefits, in Bradford, 33-year-old Craig is struggling to make ends meet. He's been unemployed for almost two years after giving up work to become a full-time dad to his son, Brooklyn. What are you playing? Pool. Are you winning? Craig previously worked as a demolition labourer and the long hours meant he didn't have much time to spend with his son. I had to be up at early hours in the morning and stuff like half five, six o'clock, so there were long days and tiring days. Sometimes you won't get home till seven o'clock at night. So a bit time you've got showered and had some tea and got yourself sorted out, it was an early time to go back to bed. Even though Craig says he is better off on benefits at the moment, he has bigger plans for Brooklyn. I want him to do a lot better than what I'm doing. I don't want him to follow the same road as such, you know. I want him to have a good education. I don't want to pressure him too much, but it, I do want him to have a stable job where hopefully not he ain't going to end up like I am and where I've ended up on benefits and stuff like that. Craig receives around £1,000 a month in various benefits. He says that budgeting is vital to make sure they have everything they need. When I go on my big shop, I can spend about uh, 50, 50 to £60, pound, but I, that'll last me, like, um, three weeks. And then when I do my essential shop, um, I spend about 20 to £25 pound and that's just right to get my stuff to get me through the week till I can afford my big shop. We eat fairly well, I won't say. We go, we go without or anything. We've always got food in the fridge, in the freezer, in the cupboards. I will get some luxury stuff, like I'll, I will get him his favourite ice cream and stuff like that and his biscuits and that. We don't go without. Being a full-time dad means Craig has the time to make home-cooked meals and takes pride in providing Brooklyn with a well-balanced diet. Brooklyn likes his pizzas and burgers and kids' teas and stuff, but I try to give him a variety of stuff, not the same stuff, and that make sure he gets his vegetables and stuff like that. You didn't say where I was weak. Come on. Yes, I did. No, you did not. Mm. Yeah. Come on, Brooklyn. Come on, on the Isle of Sheppey, with a large chunk of his benefits funding his regular trips to the pub, Carl is eagerly awaiting his next payment. Log in and please give me the good news. Yes, 200 went in on Monday and 220 today. That's right, and hopefully 330 going in next week. Yes, finger shopping, <laughs> we'll have a pint. Carl spent most of his life working as a city centre cab driver, but since going on benefits, he spends all his time and money living a life of leisure by the sea. I first moved down here in the mid-90s with my wife, and um, unfortunately, when she passed away, I moved away, and uh, I came here last year for a short break, for a weekend, and met a few old friends and really enjoyed it and I decided I'm going to stay <laughs> and I've been here for the last eight months and hopefully I'm going to see me eight days out in this glorious little place, sun shining, nice cool breeze, everything's absolutely wonderful. It is. I love life. <laughs> the Isle of Sheppey not only gives Carl his dream lifestyle, it also saves him a few quid. The cost of living is nothing like London or anywhere like that, you know, I mean, local shops are reasonably priced, you get some good offers there. Um, price of the beer is fantastic. <laughs> you couldn't wish to live anywhere better. It's absolutely marvellous. Carl is left with around £160 a week after bills, and now, with only himself to feed at home, he can't wait to spend his money. <laughs> Payday! <laughs> oh, here we go. Right, £100. Don't want to go mad. Right, let's get spending. Get the important stuff first. Snickers, four for a pound. Mm, I'll spoil myself. Something really nutritious. A pot noodle. <laughs> Big one, giant one. And, of course, the most important meal of the day. Oh. And just to spoil myself for today, I'm going to have a mint magnum. And can I have 20 uh, usual cigarettes, please? 
With 25 quid gone on the shopping, Carl still has £135 for the rest of the week. Uh, I had to get a few groceries in, you know, a few necessities. Uh, still got money. I think it's about time I went to the cake shop and really spoiled myself and had a cake as well as my ice cream. <laughs> One fresh cream cake for home for the eating of. Love it. <laughs> While Carl spends his money as he likes, Craig and Brooklyn aren't as fortunate. Craig has to carefully balance his weekly budget, but today there's an emergency. I'm being paid today, so um, Brooklyn's in some dying need of some new trainers because somehow decided to rip part of the bottom off these last night. Today I got uh, £144, so hopefully I'm going to be able to get to Brooklyn some trainers. Um, I can't really say how much I'm going to spend because it is a necessity. So as long as I can get enough food and things in like that, whatever is left will probably more or less go all go on Brooklyn's trainers. Surviving on 12 grand a year benefits, any unplanned purchases can be a big dent in the finances. But Craig is keen to make sure that Brooklyn doesn't go without. I've taken £80 out, so hopefully I won't have to spend that much, but that's roughly what I've got to play with, and then the rest of the money I've got is spoken for, for food and gas and electric and things like that. It's a lot of money for each trainer than that, but hopefully they should last him the rest of this term now up until six week holidays, and then I'll be able to put money away each week until he's due back at school and then get him everything new again for the beginning of the new school term. Craig's withdrawn over a week's job seekers' allowance for the trainers. But when it comes to Brooklyn, there's no expense spared. This is my first job seekers of this month, so it's going to be another two weeks now until I get job seekers. So I'm going to have to budget now for the next fortnight on the other little bits and bats of money that I do get. Um, but apart from that, we should be all right. Since being on benefits, Craig has become an expert at budgeting. Brooklyn has his trainers and Craig has some cash left over. I've gotten these today. Uh, they're all black, like you need for school and everything. Um, do, do a £40. Do you like them? You're not going to ruin them, are you? What can I play football in them? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see about that one. <laughs> Coming up, Carl is feeling flush and finds a new way to spend his benefits. I got her yesterday. Her name's Lulu. And uh, it's uh, a new challenge I'm looking forward to. Is it going to be my little baby girl? Craig is told to look for work or he'll have his payment stopped. You have to agree to how much job searching you're going to do with him. And if you don't stick to it, they will stop him on your flag it up. And Suzanne spends her benefits in pursuit of fame. Yeah, I was really tense at first. So it was knowing how to learn to relax and how to pose, really. In Worcester, after being labelled as the Lotto Gran by the press, Suzanne has got the fame bug. Today, she's been asked to appear on a local radio station for a tell-all interview. I've arrived at the Black Country radio station to obviously let the general public know, you know, to all the listeners out there, to how this has all come about, to what's happened, to how it's affected my life. So I'm hoping so much that this radio show will change things for me. I really do. Good morning, Sunny. Good morning. Are you right, darling? Let's have a little cuddle. Oh, lovely. Nice to see how you doing? doing? I'm all right, yeah. All right. Don't be nervous. No, it's going to be I'm good. Not. Right, you're listening to Monica Price in the morning here on Black Country Radio. And joining me now is Suzanne Hinty. Good morning, Suzanne. Good morning. Good morning. Right, so, Sunny, can I call you Sunny? That's what you're known yes, you as. Yes, you can. So, Sunny, now, you've become quite famous. Um, you've become known as a lottery grand. I mean, how does it feel now you are in the public eye, Sunny? What, well, how has that changed your life? Well, this is something, obviously, I need the public to know. It's not something I have chose or wanted. It happened to me. One minute, I was just this normal girl living where I am in Worcester, and then all of a sudden, I'm walking into a celebrity lifestyle. But what the public need to realise, and I'm sure anybody else would have done the same, I am doing only, you know, 
positive out of a negative situation because nobody really knows what I've been through. So what's the future for you, Sunny? Well, you know, I'm just enjoying every moment of it and whatever is offered to me, which so far has only been good, um, I'm just enjoying and going with the flow, really, because you just don't know what's ever next. Interview over, Suzanne hopes it will finally help her move on from being the Lotto Gran. Do you know, I really, really enjoyed it, and it's the best thing I've done throughout all of this because I feel such a relief. <sighs> it's like a weight's been lifted. And I think the further I go in this, and maybe have more in, I'm hoping other people will want to speak to me now. On the Isle of Sheppey, Carl has been receiving disability benefits for 15 months because of a serious lung condition. He's been a heavy smoker for most of his life. I've smoked since I was about 12, 13 years of age. You know, it's, uh, as a kid, trying to impress your friends. I'm up to 30, 40 cigarettes a day now. You know, so um, I really need to pack in and uh, get some help with it. I, I, you know, I know it's stupid for me to carry on, and it's not helping my voice either. <laughs> and so I think my singing career is absolutely naked. <laughs> with the heavy drinking and smoking taking its toll, Carl's finally realised he needs to make big changes. There, that's the uh, smoking cessation referral. Yes, it shows you. I am going to go to the doctors. I'm going to make an appointment. It is happening. And I'm going to be a non-smoker, hopefully, in the next few days or maybe a week or two, whatever, whenever they give me the date. I'll go and make the appointment. And the new Carl. <laughs> in Bradford... Dad Craig is living off benefits so that he can raise his son full time. I've lived here for just short of a year. It'll be here in August. Too. It's not a massive house, but it's ideal for me in Brooklyn. The two bedroom house is privately rented and costs £400 a month. This is Brooklyn's room. Um, it's really, it's fairly small but it does Brooklyn for what he needs. He's got his Xbox and his telly and stuff, so he's, I think he's happy with what he's got in his room. Craig's rent is paid for by housing benefit. It's just one of the reasons he says he's better off not working. If I got a job, um, they'd probably stop paying my rent. Um, I'd have to pay it myself and everything, so I'd, I'd probably still be struggling even if, if I were working. Having been unemployed for almost two years, Craig has been told by the job centre he has to constantly look for work to keep his job seeker's allowance. You have to agree to how much job searching you're going to do with them, and if you don't stick to it, they will look in at it and either stop your money or flag it up. Obviously, you don't want to be sat on here constantly because you have got other things to do and things like that. So I just spend an hour every other day just having a look and applying for jobs and just hoping I get something out of it. Even though he says he'd love a job, with the hours he's able to work and the cost of childcare, there aren't many options. I do see some jobs on here which I think, yes, I'd love to do that, but then when you look further into the application, what they require and things like that, it's, it's one of them jobs that you know you're never going to be able to do because it's either a lot of work in a way or a lot of long hours and things like that. But Craig hopes one day he'll finally come off benefits. I will probably be on them for a bit longer, but eventually I will want to get off them and go out and get back to work and things like that and be able to give Brooklyn a bit of a better life. But at this moment in time, I am better off. Meanwhile, in Worcester, someone who's not looking for work is Suzanne. She has become notorious as Lotto Gran, the woman who tried to claim £33 million she hadn't won. Today, she's using her benefits to fund her path to fame by getting some promotional photos taken, and she's planning to pose in her underwear. I'm a bit nervous, as you probably can see, but feeling quite excited about it as well. The underwear I'm modelling is actually from a really sort of, gosh, um, laundry shop. I just want to get there now and just do it. Eight months ago, Suzanne was working as a cleaner but was signed off sick. So she now has time to work at being a celebrity. Being on this benefit, well, it gives me 24 hours of free time, really. Whereas, obviously, if this would be happening to me while I was still in my job, 
I think it would be a totally different scenario. I wouldn't have really as much free time to give into this. And I think it would become very, very tiring. Uh, hence why, I suppose, celebrities out there, that's, this is the only thing they, you know, this is what they do. For the photo shoot, Susanna's blagged some posh underwear from a local shop. But she isn't being paid for modelling it. In fact, she's paying for the shoot out of her benefits. It's coming out of my pocket. I'm having to pay for it, um, which I don't mind because it's something what will hopefully create a, bod a better profile for myself. So for that, I think, you know, £100 is definitely worth that because, you know, at the end of the day, who knows what will become of it. Although she's still on benefits, Suzanne feels that being known as the Lotto Gran dramatically changed her life for the better. To me, this is all like... As if, as if I'm in a dream, because I was just this normal woman living in Worcester. And now it's slowly becoming more and more like living like a celebrity lifestyle. In her quest for fame, Suzanne recently hired herself an agent called Barry. He's turned up today to show her the ropes. We're just getting to place here so that you don't have to sit there and you need to chair and prop what you want. What John's going to need to do for now, we're doing some focusing and you'll start to get warm under the light. So, mm -hmm. so you're a bit nervous, don't be nervous because you'll just you'll get more and more comfortable over the next half hour or so. And we'll probably take two or three hundred pictures, but we only need four or five. Alright? Alright. Okay. Uh, you can just wait. Yeah, I was really tense at first. So it was knowing how to learn to relax and how to pose really. I think I've worn it well. I think I've done myself justice. I'm quite proud of myself, really. I think the whole experience is really good. Hopefully, fingers crossed, something will, you know, somebody will see it, say, wow, well, you know, she looks quite nice. While Suzanne has spent £100 on her photo shoot, on the Isle of Sheppey, Carl has forked out almost half of this month's benefits on a brand new housemate. I got her yesterday, her name's Lulu, and uh, she's gonna be my little baby girl. It's gonna be an expensive uh, friend to have, but because um, I'm, I'm not working and I, when I can take her out for walks, hopefully she'll get me a bit fitter with the non-smoking and the exercise. And um, it's uh, a new challenge I'm looking forward to. I'm sure she's uh, going to be a wonderful friend. With Lulu likely to cost around £1,500 a year in upkeep, Carl is planning to cover the cost by giving up the fags. But if he doesn't quit, he hopes his benefits will still stretch. I'd probably spend about um, 30, 35 pound a week on cigarettes and tobacco. You know, so um, once I pack in, keeping the dog will be offset by me not smoking, obviously. And I think I can look after a dog for about 30, 35 pound a week. So it's another incentive to give up smoking. It just gives me that push, that oomph, you know. It's, uh, and I do like to have a bit of companionship in the flat. And now I've got her, I'm, you know, I'm over the moon with her. Look at this. Oh, beautiful sunny day. Out in the big wide world, look at this beautiful. Carl spent £440 to buy Lulu, as well as £70 on toys and necessities, but he's not finished yet. I want some really nice treat, puppy treats. How about some, uh, like, a, a real bone? Oh, and to chew spray. Yeah. Just to keep her off the uh, chair legs. So I need a red collar, a nice soft red one. Yeah, soft for... one. Yeah, please. Can I have a look at that red diamante one for the Sunday best? Yeah. You know, I've got to get her a bit of bling. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but uh, they're worth it. They're not... They are. You're worth it. Could be doing an advert for L'Oreal. <laughs> <laughs> bye, thank you. Bye. Bye, Lulu. Come on, say bye. Just spent another 30 quid today. 70 quid. Yesterday, 400 odd buying you. Wow, over 500 pound already you've cost me. 
but you're worth every penny. You are, and I'm sure everybody loves you, and they will do. Yeah, come on then, let's go home. Yeah, come on, yes, I know, come on then, let's go home. Coming up, Craig summoned to the job centre about his commitment to finding work. Having to come down here, it's a big effect on my lifestyle, but obviously with the circumstances, I need to do this. Carl's smoking habit brings his finances and his health to breaking point. <coughs> And that's why I want to pack in smoking. And Suzanne's dream hot tub has been installed, but it's not quite living up to expectations. The temperature's not quite up to where it should be, and the bubble's not working at the moment. But, you know, I'm going to have it working soon, I'm sure. <laughs> On the Isle of Sheppey, Carl and his new housemate, Lulu, are getting used to living together. Come on, then. Come on, girl. Come on. <laughs> Bless you. After already spending over £500 on his new puppy, Carl is hoping to offset the cost by giving up his 40-a-day smoking habit. Most of my money goes on smoking and drinking, but I'm trying one thing at a time. Quit the smoking get a little bit healthier, have the incentive then to go on and either control or abstain altogether from the booze. So the reasons Carl had to stop work and go on benefits. <coughs> <coughs> and that's why I want to pack in smoking. Carl's worried about his health, so after several failed attempts to quit the fags, he's finally decided to get some help. I've uh, got an appointment to see the smoking cessation nurse. She's going to advise me what to take, what to do, and apparently give me a date as to when I'm going to stop smoking. After 43 years as a smoker, his decision to quit is starting to hit home. Big change in my life coming up. It is finally becoming real now. I've been thinking about it for a few months. Um, I haven't been bothered to do it in the past, but now I've got to do it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit worrying, um, but I'll do it for the sake of the dog and my own health, of course, you know what I mean? It's, uh, we'll all benefit from it, hopefully. Carl is entitled to six weeks' worth of free NHS prescriptions to help him give up. I'll just have a look what they've gave me for my stopping smoking. 60 nicotine strips, mint flavoured, wow. Looking forward to them, I do love mints. Nicorette inhaler, nicotine. Oh, that's the cigarettes, I've got something to do with my hands all the time. Apparently that helps you pack in smoking as well, because one of the biggest things is psychological, not doing anything with your hands. And with his future health in the balance, Carl is hopeful that this is the push he needs. I'm really determined this time, I want to give up. And obviously it's going to save me a fortune as well, you know, which uh, I'll be spending on the dog and maybe a few other little luxuries for myself. <laughs> Instead of struggling week to week. No, I don't really. <laughs> In Bradford, today, single dad Craig has to make his fortnightly visit to the Dole office to find out if he's done enough job searching to get his benefits. I'm going to sign on today, um, but it's a bit awkward today because I've got Brooklyn because he's, um, he's not at school, he's on school holiday, so it takes a day out or something that I could have spent doing with him, but instead now I'm going to have to go sign on and take him with me. Craig has been on benefits for two years, but he still finds the routines difficult. Having to come down here, it's a big effect on my lifestyle. I never wanted to do this, but obviously with the circumstances, I need to do this for me and Brooklyn to be able to survive. Although he's a full-time dad, being on Job Seekers Allowance means he has to be available for work. He also has to prove he's been trying to find a job or he'll lose his money. We're OK today. Um, they just had a look into what I'd been doing over the last couple of weeks, job search-wise and stuff. She just had a little scan, rebooked me in for my next signing-on date in a couple of weeks. 
So now we can get home and we can spend the rest of the day doing whatever Brooklyn wants to do because he's on holiday, so we'll probably end up going to a park or something like that and enjoying the enjoy rest of the day together. Craig's payments are safe for the next fortnight. Brooklyn, get here. Living week to week means he can't plan long term, but he's happy he gets more time to be a dad. What was that? <laughs> Getting all this time with Brooklyn makes up for a lot of time and miss how we were working. I think he enjoys it more as well because he gets to see more and he gets to spend more time with me and everything. He didn't get it before she does. Oh, <laughs> she nearly caught it. Although life on benefits can have its advantages, Craig's hopeful that one day things will change. Eventually, when I do get a job and I've, I get financially stable again and that, I want to take Brooklyn to places that he has to go and he's wanting to go on holiday and that he wants to go on a plane and stuff like that, so eventually we'll be able to do that. For now, it's just a matter of enjoying the time we've got together and just managing the best we can with what. One person who isn't worried about finances is Suzanne, as her dream of transforming her garden shed into a luxury jacuzzi room has finally become a reality. I'm just creating the finishing touches on my amazing hot tub. <laughs> if something doesn't look right or it doesn't, you know, I'm, I'll take it back off and I'll redo it again, like I've done a couple of times with this, hence why it's taken me so long, because um, it's just got to be perfect. And then inside, I've sort of kept that as a feature wall because it's got fishes and dolphins on, etc. So And I have actually got underwater lights to go in as well, as well as a surrounding lights. So, you know, I think it'll look really, really nice. Suzanne had intended to spend £350 to build her dream jacuzzi room, but after splashing out on a few extras, it's ended up costing more. I gotta be honest, it, it, all in all, it was round about, I'd say about £550 in the end, um, which I think is a bargain. Suzanne believes that being on benefits shouldn't mean changing her spending habits. Working or being on benefits it doesn't make no difference. You know, it's my money at the end of the day, so I should be entitled to spend it how I please and how I like. Yeah, it's not as warm as it should be. At the moment, the temperature is only. 23, so it's not as warm, but it's nice. So the temperature's not quite up to where it should be, and the bubble's not working at the moment, so it still doesn't feel like a proper hot tub, but I know it will do. Well, you know, I'm gonna have it working soon, I'm sure. And there we have my sign has just come up. Despite the hot tub not quite working, Suzanne hopes it's the next step to getting her celebrity lifestyle. Everybody's got their own tastes, dislikes, likes. This is what I like. This is what I wanted. I've paid for it out of my money. Whoever doesn't like it, tough. As long as I like it, that's the main thing, isn't it? It's what I wanted, so I got it. If I want something, I will get it, whether it takes time or not. You know, and I am really, really happy, so cheers. <laughs> Since filming ended, Craig has dreams of taking Brooklyn on his first ever plane journey to visit his family in America. My dad works, but he lives in America, so eventually I will take him to see his granddad because he's only ever met him once since he's been born, but I will get him over there eventually. Suzanne continues to use her benefits to fund her bid for a celebrity lifestyle. I'm going to the nail bar to treat myself to have my nails redone. You know, that's the least I can afford to do, really. And it makes me feel better as a person, so... And Carl still hasn't quit the fags, but he's determined to give it another go. You know, it's uh, the fresh air getting into my lungs, enjoying it. I'm going to keep plodding on and... I'll... I think I'm going to enjoy myself now and have an ice cream, hopefully. I hope they do the soft ones. If not, a mint magnum, my favourite, OK? <laughs> Next Thursday at 8, we meet a lady who's desperately seeking stardom on benefits. Next, though, Bear is rubbing a few people up the wrong way, and someone's about to crack. 
Yet the niceties are well and truly over in Celebrity Big Brother.